Ah, noble corn cob, how far thou hast come. You know, when they were first planting and populating the prairies and the plains of the great Midwest, corn cobs had two uses. One use was for fuel, burn them in your stove or your fireplace, and the other use was toilet paper. Oh, sure, people made little dolls out of them for children, and they were sometimes mixed in for animal feed, but their two primary uses were heat and as teepee for your bunghole. Ah, how far we have come. Well, back in the late 19th century, there was a gentleman who started making corn cob smoking pipes for his fellow farmer friends and neighbors. They became so popular that he started a company in Washington, Missouri, that we now know as Missouri Meerschaum. Missouri Meerschaum is one of the oldest continuously operating privately owned businesses in the United States. And with good reason. They make a very good product. But are they perfect? No. But then again, what in life is perfect? First of all, let's talk about the construction of the pipes. This shank from mortise all the way into the pipe bowl is made of birch. Birch is a semi-soft hardwood. It is very easy to work. It is very tolerant of heat. It does not absorb a lot of moisture. Uh, that is one reason birch bark was used to make canoes. You know, hollowed out birch logs to make canoes. It's fairly water resistant as far as woods go. Now the cobs are cured for a couple of years before they ever get put on the lathe and turned into smoking pipes. So by the time they are milling these down to make pipe bowls out of them, they're essentially as hard as, we'll say, pear wood, as is used in the brog pipes, or cherry and some of the other woods. It's, they're very sturdy and very durable. Is there a downfall to the construction? Yes, and they appear at both ends of the stem. First of all, these stems are about as cheaply made as you could possibly find anywhere. I've heard people say, well, you just go, go and get it for every stem. Go and get it for every stem, or for every stem, or for every stem. No! This happens to be a $14 pipe. I'm not sticking a $30, $25 stem on it. It makes no sense. And for the less expensive pipes, the Diplomat, the Legend, and so on, uh, would you really spend 25 bucks for a pipe that you might be able to throw away if it breaks or goes bad on you? I don't think it's... Of course, you could change you know, between pipe bodies. You could change stems and make one stem serve several pipes, but that kind of defeats the purpose. Now, I'm not saying that the Forever Stem is not a great product. Everybody I have talked to who has owned one recommends them extremely highly. Uh, really a good idea if you have a beloved corn cob pipe and you want to put a new stem on it. I think that the, um, the Forever Stems are a great option. But be advised, before you buy your first Missouri Meerschaum or any other corn cob pipe, the stem is going to be cheap. And in fact, these don't take an awful lot of clenching. If you chew at all when you clench, you will pretty much fray the lip within a few uses. You can also split these stems very easily by clenching them too hard. Now, fortunately, Missouri Meerschaum stems are not the most expensive pipe accessory you'll ever buy. Uh, Missouri Meerschaum sells both the Danish filter bits the, and the standard bits for 50 cents a piece and the mini bits for their smallest cobs for 25 or 35 cents. So they're not terribly expensive to replace. Other problem with the construction has to do with the actual design of the pipe. This area of the pipe, the shank of the pipe, actually penetrates through to inside the bowl and terminates at about the center of the bowl. It is beveled so that you can get tobacco packed in easily around it. But if you smoke too far down in the bowl, eventually that shank end will start to burn. That tastes terrible. Now, if you're patient and you, know, and you don't mind the nasty burning wood taste with your tobacco and stuff, eventually that will burn away until it's flush with the inner wall of the pipe. It's a nasty process. You can avoid that by mudding the pipe. Yay, mudding! 
Mudding is very simple. Get yourself a cigar, not a flavored cigar, please. Just a good, you know, decent, inexpensive cigar. Smoke it. Tap the ash into a little shot glass or some other small receptacle. Add a tiny bit of water and mix it up to the point where it's kind of like loose, gooey, gushy Play-Doh. Just pack it in the bowl, let it cure for a couple of days. Uh, you know, you want to put a pipe cleaner all the way down the shank into the bowl so you don't plug up the draw hole, obviously, with your mud. But you can mud them, and that will keep you from burning that shank end. And it will also protect the bottom of the pipe from burn through. Out of the 18 Missouri Meerschaum pipes I currently have in service, only four are mudded, and I've never had trouble with any of the others. But I don't smoke all the way down to that little... Maybe I can show you on this Morgan that I have here. Or maybe I can't. There's a diplomat. Diplomat. Yeah, you might be able to see this Morgan, the shank, the inner shank is, or the extended shank is partly burned away. I don't know. Maybe you can't see that. I don't know. All right. So that's the inner shank problem. Um, I think this pipe is actually mudded, too. I'm not sure. I've replaced the stem on this one, by the way, twice. 50 cents a shot, no big deal. Love my Morgans. I love these little nose warmers. Aren't they great? Check that out. All right. All right. Morgan is a great little smoker. Um, all right. We've talked about the construction. Now let's talk about breaking in the pipe. I've heard the myth that these do not require breaking in. I'm sorry. That's nonsense. Bullshit crazy talk you don't know what you're talking about because you're not trying to build a cake like you would in a briar but you are trying to get rid of the manufacturing odor sometimes it's the smell of lacquer sometimes it's just the smell of burning corn and that smell or those smells will persist for your first three or four bowls and if you have a sensitive palate they're not real pleasant so just count on your first three or four bowls being kind of tough in these. It's not that you're building cake. You don't have to smoke them slow. You pack them right up to the rim. Pack them as if they were a well-broken-in pipe. But count on a couple of fairly unpleasant-tasting smokes the first couple of times you use the pipe. That's what I mean by breaking in. If you get a cob and you smoke your favorite tobacco in it and you go, ah, that tastes like terrible, uh, give it time. Because it, that corny smell and the lacquer smell goes away very, very quickly. All right, do these pipes ghost? I've heard it said that they do not, and in fact, they do not permanently ghost. However, a very strong scented tobacco will leave some flavor in the bowl that will dissipate by halfway through the next bowl if you use a different tobacco. So I can even smoke a very strong English, although I wouldn't in this particular shape of bowl, but you can smoke a fairly strong English in one of these and then go to a Virginia and you'll taste the Latakia and stuff for about the first third to half of the bowl. And then after that, it'll just taste like the tobacco you put in here. That's what I mean by temporary flavor carryover. And it does happen with corn cob pipes. <clears throat> Nothing to be concerned about. You will never permanently ghost a cob. Uh, third thing I've heard is these things are crap that they don't last more than 60, 70 bowls. That's not true. Uh, our good friend Hillman, Skeletal Piper, has a Missouri Meerschaum diplomat that he has been smoking pretty regularly for 12 years. That's a pretty good track record for a $7 pipe. Seven bucks give or take, for the diplomat, right? So you can get 12 years out of a $7 pipe. Isn't that pretty good? I, I think that's awesome. They're not indestructible, however, and there are a couple of things that will kill these pipes, one of which I've discovered accidentally is getting them wet, then drying them, then smoking them right away. Uh, that will cause them to crack because the water somehow gets absorbed just a little bit. Maybe these are not I suspect supposed to be all that porous, but I think a little water can work its way in, and if it does, it expands when you smoke it, causes a crack. You can drop these and crack them, especially if they're hot, 
I've done it. It is very easy to burn away the inside of the top ledge of the pipe by careless use of a lighter. And you might be able to see on this one, which is a fairly new pipe, I'm already singeing this up pretty badly and right away. But that's bad lighter use, or, you know, I should be using wooden matches or a Zippo with an angled flame or something like that. I'm just using a Bic. And as a result, I'm singeing the top of it. And you will do that with these. They'll singe fairly easily. They're not indestructible, but they're pretty tough. And since they're so inexpensive, they make a great car pipe, camping pipe, fishing pipe, garage pipe, travel pipe. If you drop it, lose it in the stream, falls over the gunnel of a boat, you accidentally drop it into the campfire while you're being drunk and stupid, as I know many of us are around campfires, no big whoop. What have you lost? Seven bucks? In Minnesota, that's uh, not quite a pack of cigarettes. So, no big deal, right? Now, this pipe was 15 or 14. I'd be a little sadder if I lost this pipe, but hell, it's still only 14 bucks. Now, if I dropped my Winslow or my Nording or my Peterson, I wouldn't be terribly happy about it. This, I could shrug. So that's another advantage of these. This makes a good beginner's pipe. That's another myth surrounding Missouri Meerschaum pipes. Absolutely. These pipes are incredibly easy smokers and incredibly forgiving if you're an idiot with your pipe. Can you burn them out? Yes. Yeah. Can you stick a pipe tool right through the bottom of them? Yeah, if they don't have the wooden bottom, it's not that tough to do. I've done it on a couple of them. Stuck the pick down in there, try to bust up the ember, push the pick right through the bottom of the pipe. I've done it. Twice. I've owned uh, 30 of these. I still, or not 30, 24 of these. I still have 18 in service. The rest I've given away. So, and most of them were in that grab bag deal. That's another thing that makes this great for beginners. You can buy a bag of 10 of these for 30 bucks. They're factory seconds, meaning there's something wrong with the finish. Maybe the bowl isn't drilled as far down as they normally do, or maybe they drilled it down a little too far. Uh, maybe there's just something goofy in the lacquer or the varnish they put on it. But they're all smokable. They, they're guaranteed to be smokable. So what do you got to lose? Three bucks a pipe? Fantastic deal. I think I got... Uh, 10 of my, yeah, I, I said half, but 10 of my pipes were in the grab bag, so. So, yes, these do make a great beginner's pipes. And, in fact, I would have smoked a lot more tobacco in my life had I started with a cob back in 1976 when I bought my first crappy briar. My first briar was a disaster. It was a basket pipe. The draw hole was badly drilled. The tobacco chamber was drilled enough off center that the wall of the pipe developed serious hot spots, even with gentle smoking. It gurgled and it got very, very wet, even though it was a bent stem, billiard, uh, sandblast. Actually, it was quite a, an attractive pipe, ebony sandblast. But they never told me that, you know, you need to swish them out once in a while with pipe cleaner. They never even sold me pipe cleaners. They sold me this stupid aluminum pipe nail combination tamper scraper uh, for a buck. But then never told me how to use the pipe, really, or smoke it. And the first tobacco they sold me to smoke in it was Borkum Rift Cherry Liqueur. I didn't even make it through the pouch before I threw pouch, tobacco, and crappy pipe tool in the garbage. However, if I had started with a good Missouri Meerschaum and some decent tobacco, I probably would have continued smoking and not taken a nearly 35-year hiatus from pipe smoking. I guess it was even longer than that, 37-year hiatus from pipe smoking. Yeah, these are great beginner's pipes. And now I'm going to talk to you like a Dutch uncle about cigars and why cigars are inferior to pipes. There are some fine cigars. Ah, don't get me wrong. There are some wonderful cigars out there. But you typically pay quite a premium for them. A $20, $30, even $50 cigar is not uncommon. And I know a lot of guys on YouTube and women who frequently talk about purchasing $6 cigars, $8 cigars. Guys, that's one long smoke. For twice that money, we'll say $12, 
you can get enough pipe tobacco for 10 smokes. 10 smokes of equal length to that cigar. And it's going to be a gourmet experience if you choose your tobaccos carefully. See, one problem with a cigar is you're stuck with what you got. Whatever tobacco they use in there. Um, you can't really blend your own cigar. You know, you, you're stuck with the flavor. With pipe tobacco, you can mix it up a little bit. Maybe you like a little chocolate with your Latakia. No problem in a pipe. Can't do that with a cigar. Not really. I mean, you can you can case them with liqueur or something to give them extra flavor, but that hardly ever works. No, actually, I think, and it's my experience, but it's also the expert advice I received from members of the YouTube pipe community. It's very simple. Cigarettes are like eating at a really cheap fast food place. Cigars are like a really good quality TV dinner or frozen dinner. Pipe is a gourmet meal. And I know you cigar lovers are going to argue with me, oh, but this cigar, this was hand-rolled by virgins. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I bet you, you paid probably 20 times what the cigar is worth. And the reason I say that is I have gone into B&M tobacco stores and then, you know, checked on cigar prices because friends wanted me to pick some up in Costa Rica. And I go down to Costa Rica and get the Nicaraguan cigars, the Costa Rican cigars, the Honduran cigars, the Dominican cigars, closer to their source with fewer taxes. And a cigar that you might pay $10 for up here, you'll pay $2 for in Central America or a dollar for, sometimes less, by the box. So uh, cigar smokers tend to overpay in general. And part of that is hype surrounding the cigar hobby. It has been associated, cigar smoking, has been associated with high-power business types on the golf course. For better or worse, that's the image that cigars have. And they're priced accordingly. They're priced for the wealthier among us. I cannot afford to smoke a cigar of the same quality as the pipe tobacco I can afford to smoke. So if you're going to get started in smoking something other than cigarettes, don't go to cigars. Go to a pipe. And if you're going to go to pipe, don't spend a lot of money on a briar for your first pipe. Get one of these. A little Missouri Meerschaum. This one, 14 bucks. This one, about 7 bucks. This is the Diplomat. Uh, the Morgan, 5 bucks that I showed you earlier. Compare that with a $20 Graybo. Okay? Either of these two pipes I have in my hands outsmoke this one 10 to 1. It's, they're so good. This pipe is one of the finest pipes I have in my collection. It's not the most expensive. This is a Missouri Meerschaum a Great Dane Spool. And I've dedicated this one to Balkans. It's really good for them. So, that's a little primer on cob pipes. No, they're not indestructible. Yes, they need to be broken a little bit. They don't ghost, but flavors will stay for a bowl or two. They'll stick around to remind you they were there. They're easy to smoke, easy to take care of. They do have a couple of drawbacks construction-wise, including mediocre stems at best, and that protruding shank that goes directly into the bowl, which will burn away with time, but is nasty to smoke while it's doing that. Therefore, they either need to be mudded or you'll waste some tobacco with every bowl to avoid burning or singeing that shank. They stay cool when you smoke them. They dissipate, dissipate heat very well. And uh, they're almost the perfect smoking pipe. That is my brutally honest primer on corn cob pipes. Now, where do you get them? I forgot that one important point. They sell these all over. You're not going to find every model at every retailer. But most brick-and-mortar tobacco stores will carry at least a few of these. The more popular, the diplomat, the country gentleman. Uh, drug stores will sometimes sell the less expensive parts of this line, uh, typically the Legend or the Washington. Uh, you'll, you can find them in a lot of drugstores and general merchandise retailers. Uh, you can buy them online. Now, everybody talks about Aristocobs. Great outfit. Really great people. Scott is a gem of a human being who will help you enjoy your cob smoking experience to its fullest. They can recommend replacement stems for the pipes they sell. They've got some custom options. They sell pre-made pipe mud. Just add water. Uh, so anything you need to enjoy your cob experience, 
they're going to have at Aristocobs.com. You can also buy these pipes directly from Missouri Meerschaum. Their website is corncobpipes.com. And I will put the contact information down in the bucket so that you can go and check them out for yourselves. Hey guys, if you haven't smoked a cob, if you're a pipe snob, I only smoke my $700 Dunhill because nothing else will suffice when I smoke my Penzance. I need to smoke my Penzance and my $600 Dunhill because I essentially have no penis, but the pipe is marvelous compensation. Yeah, yeah, pipe snobs, snobs of any kind just piss me off. They really do. And, oh, if you're not smoking Stonehaven or Hobbit's weed, please. You know, get yourself some Carter Hall and a cob, Bubba. You're going to enjoy the hell out of it, I guarantee you. From the dank basement, this is the non-snob, the anti-snob, corn cob smoking. And yes, I have briars and mirrors too, but I love my cobs. I'm Uncle Squinty. Thanks for watching. What do you guys think about cobs? You like your cobs? Or do you think they should just have been used for toilet paper? That also leads me to speculate as to how they were used as toilet paper. I mean, did they work them up and down the crack the long way like this? That would make the more sense. Or did they literally, you'll pardon the expression, cornhole themselves? I mean, how do you wipe your butt with a corn cob? Weird. Man, those pioneers were tough.